In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw scientific diagrams. Which software tools to use? We will discuss some free and some paid tools and also some of the workarounds where you can use multiple tools to create a scientific diagram. Scientific diagrams are important communication tools for teachers and researchers to convey ideas, concepts and models. And as the saying goes, a picture is probably worth more than a thousand words. But the scientific community is only a small portion of the population. And for creating these scientific diagrams, we have to rely on some of the graphic design tools. And most of these tools, they don't have scientific elements which we need to convey the scientific ideas. For example, laboratory equipment, springs, pulleys, and some icons you use when demonstrating scientific ideas in your technical diagrams. So we are going to discuss these tools and most importantly, what are some of the important considerations when choosing a tool? Because every tool has a learning curve and you cannot just try one and go for other and another because it will waste a lot of time. So you have to choose any tool carefully according to your requirements. So these are some of the things we are going to discuss in this video. But if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Tahir and I make videos about online educational tools available for teachers and students or for anyone trying to learn new skills. If you are interested in this topic, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel. And now let's get started. Now, first let's talk about types of scientific diagram. There are three main types, tables and charts, where you want to show a relationship between two quantities or pattern in a data. Then there are flow diagrams, where you want to show a process, a workflow or an algorithm. And, and then there are illustrations, where you want to demonstrate a scientific concept, a new idea or a model you are using in your research. And there are two main use cases for scientific illustrations. One is for academic demonstrations, and the second is for research publications or books. Of course, you can create posters and presentations and other things, but they can be broadly classified in these two groups. Now, the next thing I would like to highlight is the file formats. So these are some of the file formats you might see. Now, image file formats can be divided into two main classes, raster image formats and vector image formats. Now, raster images are those which are resolution dependent. You create an image with a certain resolution and if you change the size, the quality of the image will change. While vector images are those that if you change the size of the image, the quality will not change. So you can zoom in, zoom out, the images will stay razor sharp. Now, do we need vector images for all of our applications? Not necessarily, because for demonstrations and presentations, for academic purpose, raster images are good enough. But when you are publishing those scientific diagrams in a journal, or you are writing a book, then you should use vector images, if possible. So I have discussed why EPS file format is the best in a video you can find on my channel. So this is one of the important points when deciding a tool. Normally when we talk about scientific diagrams, we need all types of diagrams, tables and charts, flow diagrams and illustrations. But first I will discuss tools which specialize in a particular drawing type. So let's talk about what tools are available for creating tables and charts. I have listed these tools on this slide. Some of these are free tools and some are paid. Excel is a well-known tool. You have a free version of this as well. MATLAB is an expensive tool but has much more capabilities. Scilab is an alternative to MATLAB and which is open source and free tool. I have few videos about Scilab on my channel which you can watch and those will be enough for you to get started. Then we have LaTeX, a versatile multi-purpose tool including creating flow diagrams. I have a dedicated video for this. But there is a problem with LaTeX that there is a learning curve. You have to spend some time to learn LaTeX, but then you can create a large variety of documents, in particular research publications. It is very easy to handle images. The quality of the plots and tables you can create in LaTeX is much superior than Excel or MATLAB. Then if you are a programmer, you can use Python and C libraries. I have used C libraries for creating my plots and charts during my PhD and you can see in my publications and you will realize 
how beautiful those diagrams are. But if you are not a programmer, of course, this is not a choice for you. R is another software, open source, free software for statistical data handling. You can create plots and charts in R. But again, there is a learning curve like LaTeX. So out of all these, I would suggest that if you spare a little bit of time learning Scilab, it is very easy. And if you are familiar with MATLAB, which most of the scientific community is, then Scilab is just like MATLAB. And the quality of the plots you will get will be fantastic. There is one important thing and you will get one extra advantage while using Scilab is that you will be able to put math expressions in your graphs and plots and some trigonometric functions in your plots and graphs which is hard to put other software. So therefore Scilab would be my suggestion. Now let us talk about second types of diagrams and what tools you can use to create flow diagram. I have listed five tools on this slide and all of these tools are absolutely free to use. Now here I would like to mention a very important point. There are many so-called scientific diagram tools which claim to be made for creating scientific illustrations but actually they are only flow diagram tools. I don't want to mention their names but be aware of this that most of those tools are just flow diagram creators and probably you can create some timelines and you don't need any paid tool for these two purposes. And again the same advantage, the tools I'm showing you, if you use for example Dia Diagram Editor, you can write math expressions, Greek symbols, some other math symbols, some icons in Dia using the Unicode. And I have two videos on Dia. One is how to use this software and the other is how to insert Unicode characters and you can watch those videos and you will learn enough to get started. Then again LaTeX and similarly in Canva there is only one drawback of Canva that there is no math editor but I have made a video how you can use a LaTeX editor online where you don't have to learn LaTeX. You simply go to Code Cogs. there is a website I explained how you can write mathematics there, download the SVG vector images and put in your Canva design. So this video is available how to write math in Canva on my channel. Now one thing I would like to mention here, this is not a sales pitch for my courses. I have mentioned many times in my videos that if you are a continuous follower of my YouTube channel, you might need not to buy any of my courses. The only advantage you get by paying $20 to my courses would be that you will get all the content at one place and you don't have to search for videos. And if you want to do that and you can afford to do that, you can go to my website digitidea.com and now let's talk about some of the factors you should consider before selecting a tool or a software. The first is of course the types of drawings you want to draw then the format and I forgot to mention that not all software will allow you to download vector images. Then of course ability to write math, then of course whether it's free or paid. Also we want to use some ready-made icons and images for lab equipment for example for springs, for pulleys, for slopes because that will make our job easy. You should also have some community to answer your questions. And I'm going to show you in a minute that you must look at the template library of that particular software tool which you want to purchase. Because if the templates don't have those icons and those images which you will be using most of the time, then you should avoid that software. Because then it will be waste of money and most importantly your time will be consumed in learning that software. And now let's have a look at some of the tools you can use to create scientific illustrations. And this is not a sponsored video because all of these tools have paid versions. I'm just giving you few options. But I'm assuming that we are not artists and we are not going to draw these scientific diagrams from scratch. Instead, we are looking for some tools which could provide us some pre-made images and icons. And these three tools, Canva, BioRender and Mind the Graph. These tools provide you a large number of pre-made images or elements which you can use for drawing scientific diagrams. So now I'm going to give you a tour of all these three 
tools and then it's up to you to decide which tool best suits you. So I start from Canva's free version. I also have a paid account and this is not a Canva tutorial. I will quickly show you the elements. So I create a design by clicking on this button and then I select this presentation size which is the most common size and what we are interested in is under this elements tab. So I click on this elements. There are different types of pre-made images available here as you can see and some of these can be used in scientific diagrams and the best thing is that you can search for example if I type physics here I will get the pre-made images that relates to the subject physics and if I hover over this if it's a paid image this pro icon will appear but as you can see that many of these images are free I can add this I can add this all these pre-made images are free. You can also add paid images but then you have to pay one dollar for every image which is not affordable. You will be better off paying ten dollars per month and you will get unlimited access to all these images. But there are many free images available here and those should be enough for you for most of your requirements. But you can upgrade anytime. You also have few animations as you can see here. So Canva is a fantastic tool for scientific diagrams as well. Now another very popular tool is BioRender. First have a look at their pricing plans. You can try it for free. You can also have a free for educational use. If you are a student and you can confirm that you will get this free account. Otherwise you can pay $35 a month and you will get all these benefits. And this tool is being used by many universities and academic institutes as you can see at the bottom. Now as I mentioned earlier that the first thing you should do is look at the templates. So I click on this bio render again and there is a and then I click on this icon library and as you can see here that they have a library for chemistry, for some lab projects, for human anatomy and some other areas but they don't have anything for physics or mathematics here. Then we go down and click on browse templates and here we have many templates available. On the left hand side we can select various categories for example as you can see immunology, plants and ecology, we have genetics and you can have a look at all these prepaid images and icons available in their templates. So it seems that this tool is best suited for chemistry and biology teachers and students. Now the last paid tool I would like to show you is called Mind the Graph. And if we look at their pricing plans, they have a free account and they have $7 a month, $12 a month and also an account for Teams. As I advise you to look at the templates, so I click on these templates and here we have slide presentations, graphic abstracts, infographics and posters. So there are various types of templates based on these categories. But if we scroll down we can click on any of these see more and we can have a look at various prepaid images and there are some neutral templates available where you can put your own images if you want. That is it for today. I hope you like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and share with your colleagues. Thanks for watching and see you next time.